Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I've got a speed review, so I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on some makeup that I've been testing recently, giving you guys some somewhat fast reviews on these new products. I've got some new powders from Urban Decay and Bare Minerals, the new brow products from Persona. We've got some drugstore with Essence. So if you guys are interested in hearing my thoughts on these new products, stay tuned. If you're new here, hello, my name is Kelly. I upload four videos every single week all about cruelty-free beauty. So if you're into this type of content, be sure to subscribe and let's go ahead and hop into it. Okay. Let's talk about this powder first because I feel like I need to powder a bit right now so you guys can see it in action. This is new from Bare Minerals. It's their Original Mineral Veil. Weird that they're calling it the original when it's new, but it's a pressed version of the original mineral veil that is loose. So it's new, but they're calling it original. So I'm a huge fan of the actual original mineral veil. So I thought that I was going to love this, but they're very different products. So. I don't know. First of all, I went on Bare Minerals website and kind of compared the ingredients wondering if they were similar and this just happened to be a pressed format. But the ingredients are completely different between these two. So the original actually only has four ingredients and two of the four are like cornstarch or cornstarch derivatives. The original is $27, this is $29, but you get 0.3 ounces in both. But of course they're different textures. One is pressed, one is loose. I don't really like the pressed one. I will say though, my skin type leans dry. And I, I did get a comment from someone who said she has oily skin and that she loves this. So I think that's probably a better audience for it, but I'm a little shiny right now. And by shiny, I mean sweaty. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of this and you guys can kind of see it on camera. So it does come with a puff. I think it applies a little bit better with a brush, but I have been like throwing this in my bag when I go out, if I'm getting a little sweaty and need to touch up or especially like to touch up sunglass marks. So, I mean, you can see, it's very smoothing. It, it definitely gives like a blurred effect similar to the original Mineral Veil. However, I think it makes my skin look very dry. There you go. What do you guys think? I don't really love this on my normal to dry skin. Even in the summer months when I'm like sweaty and hot, I still think it looks dry. I still get some kind of like separation in dry areas of my face. I would recommend the original Loose Mineral Veil over this so much. So I'm gonna leave both linked down below, but I think the original is way better. Okay, you know I'm still playing with my background and I hate that you can see the light reflected in the window. So I tried to move those vases to hide it. I don't know guys, what are your thoughts? My mirror that is going on this wall came today, so I might try to shift my angle a bit so you see a little bit more of this wall, a little bit less window. We'll see. I'm playing around, but I think the lighting is better today than it was in my Shop My Stash that you guys saw. I feel like that video looked really yellow. This is a little bit more true to color. But anyways, what's next? Okay, let me just say that there's a theme for this video. All the products that I thought I was gonna love, I'm like, meh, kind of like the Bare Minerals, the powder, I thought I was gonna love that. I love Bare Minerals. I love the Mineral Veil, didn't like it. But the everything in this video that I didn't think I was gonna like, I ended up really liking. So let's talk about this from Persona Cosmetics. You know that they're one of my favorite brands and they just came out with a brow product. So this is called the Swipe Up. It's a brow mascara, but it's very pigmented. So this retails for $19. It comes in four shades total. And I'm currently wearing the shade Blonde, which is the lightest shade that it comes in. I did not think I was going to like this. So let me give you some context about my eyebrows if you're new here. I don't really have eyebrows. I mean, I do, but the hair on my eyebrows is so blonde, it's basically translucent, and I don't have a lot of brow hair there to begin with, so I need a lot out of my brow products, and I usually cannot get by with just like a tinted brow mascara. Like, I'm so envious of the people that can, because for me, it just doesn't do much. Because I don't have a lot of brow to begin with, there's not much to be tinting, there's not much for it to grip onto. So I thought that would be the case with this one, this is the most pigmented brow mascara that I've tried. And it also, it has good hold, but it's not too crunchy, which I feel like you normally cannot get both. You either get great hold, but your eyebrows feel glued into place. I'm thinking like the Koki brow gel, the Anastasia one, or you get something that's a little bit softer, a little bit more touchable, like the Glossier Boy brow, but they're not necessarily locked in. This does not feel crunchy. Well, it feels like, a touch crunchy, but not that much. 
but it also holds my brows in place. I didn't think that was possible. It's also super pigmented, so I get a lot of color from it. So what I've been doing, they recommend first um, like stroking down on the brows and then going up, which I would say is a good tip when you're applying a brow mascara like this because it helps get the product both directions to kind of coat the brow better. When I do that, I can wear just this and I don't have to fill in my eyebrows first, which I did today because I wanted a little bit, I was going a little more full glam. But the other day I was just running to Target. I didn't want to do my makeup. I was like, let me put on some brow gel. I coated down, coated up, and I was shocked because I'm not normally the type of person that can just do that. Because once I do that, it doesn't really look like I did anything because I don't have eyebrows. With this, they looked amazing. So if you're into the feathery, undone brow look, you're really going to like this. I would say if you like more of a structured brow, think like the Instagram brow, this might look a little more like messy and undone than you want because I do think it gives like that feathery PC brow effect. So I could see it not being for everyone, but I'm so impressed with it. Okay, let's talk drugstore. Essence just came out with the new version of the Lash Princess. I have loved the original Lash Princess for years. I say the original, there's like five of them, but the one with the green writing on it, that one is my favorite, but they just came out with this one. This is the Lash Princess Curl and Volume Mascara. The first time I applied this, I thought, okay, this mascara is not very good, and I didn't think I was going to like it, but like most mascaras, about a week in, the performance just completely switched and now I love this. So it's meant to be kind of a curling lifting formula. I don't know that it's the best at holding a curl. Like if you want your eyelashes to stay super curled and locked in and lifted up, you usually have to go with a waterproof formula. This doesn't have like the strongest hold. It actually leaves my lashes very touchable, very feathery, very volumized though. And it's not that clumpy. Like normally a volumizing mascara, it's making your lashes thick and clumpy and like a little bit heavy. This adds a lot of volume to my lashes without them looking heavy or spidery. I do feel like it takes me a while to get where I want to get with this. Like I have to apply a lot of coats and again, First day I applied it, I felt like I got no volume, but once it was open for about a week, then it started performing even better. You do have to do a lot of coats to get to that desired volume, but it's not going to clump in the meantime. So if you like a lifted feathery look, I think you're really gonna like this. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I've kind of been more into a slightly less dramatic lash look recently. Normally I like to apply so much mascara, like I don't care if it's clumpy, I don't care if it's over the top, but lately I've been going with a little bit less and this I think is perfect for that result. $5.99, no, $4.99, just like all the other Lash Princess mascaras. I'll link this down below. I'll have everything linked as always. I do use affiliate links when I link my products down below. So if you shop through any of those links, I do receive a small commission. Always no pressure, you know, shop wherever you want, but they're there for your convenience. And if you choose to use them, thank you so much. Whew, what is next? It's a, it's a warm day today. Let's talk about what's on my lips right now. This is from Sigma. This also falls in the category of, I didn't think I would like this, but I was so surprised. So this is their new lip oil. Lip oils are having a moment right now. This formula is called the Renew Lip Oil. Let me reapply a little bit right now. Uh, the shade that I'm wearing is called Tint. So this one retails for $22 and it comes in four shades. So it is a bit on the pricey end, but I was doing some price comparisons before this video and looking on Sephora at other high-end lip oils. And this feels like it's priced at a similar price point, if not a little bit less than other high-end ones. But of course you could find one at the drugstore for way cheaper than this. So depending on your budget, it is a bit pricey, but I have been so impressed with this. This I thought would feel a little bit more oily on the skin, but I would almost describe it more like a lip gloss that's not sticky. It's a little bit thin and you have that oily sheen to it, but it doesn't feel oily on the lips. Not like you just put on like a really oily lip balm or something. The texture is very comfortable, not too sticky, like a tiny bit sticky. Like if it was windy, my hair would definitely get stuck, but I would say that's like any lip product unless it's matte. I just like how natural this looks. I've been going for pretty minimal lip looks recently. The last couple days I have like applied a regular lipstick and then said no, and then wiped it off and put this on. So today I'm wearing this plus a lip liner. I'm wearing Koki Warm Nude Lip Liner. I just applied that and kind of like tapped over it with my finger to feather it in. And then this is the result. Once I put a little bit of the oil on top, this has basically not left my purse recently. 
I'm shocked at how much I like this. I did see Andrea Mattigliano was talking about the Profusion lip oils, and I love Profusion. Their lip oils are only $4, so I kind of want to try those. I want to start prepping for another dupes video, so maybe I can find a dupe for this, but I do think it's worth the splurge at $22 if you like lip oils, but I will try to find a dupe, so stay tuned for that. But I am a Sigma affiliate, so if you did want to pick this up or anything else, um, you can get a percentage off with my code Kelly G if you are shopping on Sigma. Okay, let's do, I have another Sigma product. Let's do that one since we're already here. This, kind of weird. This is called the Sigma Switch. So this is intended to switch brush colors while you're getting ready so you don't have to have as many brushes or you don't have to worry about them getting dirty and transferring color. So it's basically just this like silicone pad and it has all these different textures and it says on it like this is for liquid, this is for cream and you can do both sides. I actually like this a lot. I think it's very effective. I will say, it is $19, so kind of pricey, but it is only a one-time purchase. Like you would buy this and you would have it forever. I used to always just have like either a rag or like a tissue with me when I'm getting ready and then just wipe it off on that. I do think this is more effective than that. I do think it like grips the color and kind of removes it from the brush a little bit better. But I don't know if it's something everyone like needs to buy. I would say you could probably get by with just like a rag or a tissue, but I do think it's kind of a cool product and I do think it's effective. For a makeup artist, I could see this being really great. I mean, it's not like sanitizing. You would just be cleaning off the color in between so you don't transfer color, but I think it's pretty neat. I was looking, the only other product on the market, I won't say the only other, but one of the only other like really popular products on the market that does this is the Veramona Color Switch. And I wanted to get like a price comparison. So that, it's a little bit different. It comes in a little pot and it's kind of this like spongy texture. I haven't tried it, but I've heard good things. I was seeing that price between $17 and $18 depending on the retailer. And then this is $19. So price point, pretty similar. I like that it's just like a one-time purchase and you can use it forever. The only downside that I have to this is that because it's this like rubbery texture it does like things kind of attach to it so i feel like i'm like picking cat hair off of it and that's probably more of a me problem than a sigma problem just that i have cat hair everywhere if you have a cat you get it but this has been in my drawer so i don't really know how that happened i do feel like i was like picking a bunch of hair off of it this morning so that's kind of a bummer but it's a cool product nevertheless not life-changing but if you needed something like that I would recommend it. Okay, another powder. This one is from Urban Decay. This one retails for $29 and it's called the All Nighter Softening Loose Setting Powder. So this comes in one shade. It's just a translucent shade. They claim that it will work for everyone. I would love to hear if anyone else has tried this. You feel like translucent works for you. I mean, it doesn't seem to have a tint, but I also have a pretty light skin tone, so I'm usually okay with translucent powders, but I'd love to hear from anyone else that's tried this if you feel like it is a true translucent. So they have a couple different powders at this point. They also have a pressed all-nighter powder. That one I would say is a little bit more heavy duty. This one is weird because I was on a call with Urban Decay when they launched this and they were describing it as like a little bit more lightweight, not as matte. But the way it's described on Sephora is that the finish is matte. I would say it's more of like a natural satin finish. If anything, I don't think it's like too, too matte. So I think it's probably best suited for normal to dry skin. Whereas if you have matte skin, you might prefer the brush off powder or the original pressed all nighter because I feel like those lock makeup in a little bit better. This is more, I would say it's pretty close to something like the original Mineral Veil from Bare Minerals where it's a light dusting. It's gonna give you like, what am I doing? <laughs> like a subtle blurred effect, but it's not too heavy. So again, not super matte, but it also doesn't look cakey. So I don't know that it necessarily fits like the all nighter line because I don't know that it locks my products in as well as some of their other all nighter products do but I think it's a beautiful powder and it's very blurring, very natural, like great for anyone with dry skin. So if you've tried any of these products, let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.